my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, now for about two weeks, the Muslims around the world feel the pain of the announcement that Jerusalem, Al-Quds, will soon be the capital of what is called Israel. And time and time again, we see the enemies of Islam who attack the Muslims trying to take Al-Quds from the Muslimin. And we ask ourselves, why is Al-Quds, why is Jerusalem so important to the Ummah of Islam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He described for us in the Qur'an the land of Bayt al-Maqdis, of Jerusalem, of Palestine, in this, these areas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it Al-Ard al-Muqaddasa, the Holy Land. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described it as being a land of barakah. Subhan al-ladhi asra bi'abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa al-ladhi barakna hawlahu. Subhanallah, the one who ascended with his servant from Mecca, al-masjid al-haram to al-masjid al-aqsa, that we have blessed its surrounding areas, a place of barakah. The place that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he went there, he led the other anbiyas in the prayer and ascended there to the heavens to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the only masjids that were allowed to travel to visit as Muslims, as it was narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, لا تشد الرحال Do not travel to visit except for three masajid, the Masjid al-Haram in Mecca and the Masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Masjid al-Aqsa. This was the first Qibla that the Muslims ever prayed to. At, in the time in Mecca, the Muslims used to face Bayt al-Maqdis. They would face Al-Quds when they would pray. And for 16 or 17 months, as it was narrated in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, when they moved to Medina, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions also faced Bayt al-Maqdis. The great reward for praying in this masjid it's very famous that it's 500 salats, but perhaps the more authentic narration is 250. And some narrations 1,000, but perhaps the most authentic is 250. Nonetheless, the scholars all agree of the great reward of traveling to pray in this great masjid. One of the only four masjids that the Dajjal will not be able to enter, as it was confirmed and narrated in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed. We know that he can't enter Mecca al-Madina. But in the hadith which came in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed, he said four masjids that the Dajjal will not be able to enter. The Masjid al-Haram in Mecca, and the Masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Masjid of At-Tur, where is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa alayhi salam, and Al-Masjid al-Aqsa. These are the four masjids that the Dajjal will not be able to enter. And because of this, this high status that it has in our religion, it's something that's very, very important to us. It's something that is from our aqidah, from our belief. Something that we're not going to roll over and just let happen. Alhamdulillah, every time that the enemies of Islam took the Masjid al-Aqsa or tried, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent someone to take it back from this ummah. And Allah will send again from this ummah who will take it back in these days, inshallah ta'ala. What's important, my dear brothers and sisters, is that we don't sit around. What happens now all the time in the days we live in is we want to play the blame game. We want to blame other people, other countries for what's going on with the Masjid al-Aqsa. And what is important and what is really significant is that each of us takes some time and reflect and ask himself, what is my role? Because we're very good at blaming others. They should be doing this. And this one should be doing that. And these shouldn't be doing that. 
And if it was like this, it would be like that. What about you? What about me? What is our role? And this is very important. If we want to be victorious as ummah, when it comes to al-bayt al-maqdis, when it comes to al-quds, it's not just about the role of certain governments. We're always blaming this government or that government. We need to realize some things. First of all, the people who are ruling, how did they get there? Through the people, through us. So if we're oppressors, then most likely those who rule us are going to be oppressors as well. وَكَذَلِكَ نُوَلِّي بَعْضَ الظَّالِمِينَ بَعْضًا Allah made it clear that we will make those who are the oppressors and the wrongdoers, we will make them allies to one another. What did they do to deserve this? بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ With that which they earned, that which they're doing. We have to look at our actions before we look at the actions of others and blame others. We know the principle that the Qur'an teaches us. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيْرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيْرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah doesn't change the situation of the people until they change the situation of themselves first. We're sitting around blaming others for what's going on. What are we doing? What's our role? This is what we need to ask ourselves first. Because I can't go to the top and make changes. I don't have that ability. And neither do, do any of you. We can advise. We can say this is how it should be. But the one thing that I can change is myself, is my family, those close to me. We can make changes there. It's important that in our own households, that Al-Quds is part of our DNA, that our children, our families understand Al-Quds. Even as some of the scholars said, hanging pictures in our, in our house and letting our, our children know of the importance of Al-Quds. Something might seem small, something might be a nice decoration, but it has meaning behind that picture. This is our masjid. This is where the Prophet ﷺ ascended to the heavens. This is where he led the Anbiya in prayer. The great reward, the great place, the place of Barakah, the Holy Land. This is it. This needs to be part of our DNA. And we need to never forget, because this is what the enemies want. They want us not really to make a big deal about it. To kind of forget it. Khalas, what happened, happened. Khalas. What can we do about it? And when they made this move, how did they make them? They made it certain individuals. Certain leaders didn't care about the Quds, and that's when they made the move. But when the people, the Ummah stands up, and Alhamdulillah, many people, we've heard of those, some from governments, from individuals, who have come out and spoken against this, Alhamdulillah. And it's something that we will never accept as Muslims. This is the land that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the Muslims and we will continue inshallah ta'ala to be the rulers of Al-Quds inshallah ta'ala. But each one of us has to step up and do what he can do. And we look at the issue of being victorious as an ummah. When it comes to all of our affairs, it goes back to certain principles. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear to us in the Quran وَكَانَ حَقًّا عَلَيْنَا نَصْرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that it's incumbent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support al-mu'mineen. But who are al-mu'mineen? Al-mu'mineen ala al-lisan, on their tongues only, are the ones you see the iman in action. When our iman is in our hearts, and then on our tongues, and it shows up in our actions, that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to support us and make us victorious. When we support the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah has promised us that He will support us. O oh, you who have believed, support Allah, and Allah will support you. And He will make your feet firm. That's when we're going to prevail, when we support the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it very clear, crystal clear. In the hadith that was narrated in Sunan Abi Dawood, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned different distractions from the dunya. 
like being involved in the business transaction of al ina which is a haram way of buying and selling, and that we're distracted by following our cattle and our agriculture, distracted from all different affairs of the dunya. This is our main concern. And that we leave fighting and struggling in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happens when we get involved in this? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sallatallahu alaykum dhullan. That Allah will put a humility upon you. He will humiliate you. And this is the situation of the ummah. What is the cure? How do we get out of this situation that we're in? Then he said, La yarfa'uhu ankum hatta tarji'u ila deedikum. Allah will not raise this humiliation from amongst you or from upon you until you return to your religion. This is the only way. And that starts, my dear brothers and sisters, with us. Not always waiting for the others to do it. So I say, if, if this ruler or that ruler or this individual or this country or that country, if they start to do it, then we'll do it. It doesn't make sense. Start with yourself. It all starts within with ourselves. Once we start as individuals, and then the khair spreads, and the ummah starts to return to their deen. SubhanAllah, as a Muslim now, my muqaddisat, my holy sites are being attacked, are being taken from me in front of my own eyes. And I'm just going to wait for somebody else. At least I'm going to be a good Muslim within myself. I say, you know what? This is because of our dhunub, our sins. It's because we've turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, what I can do myself, I can return to my deen and practice my deen in myself and in my family. And inshallah ta'ala, that's the domino effect. It starts with one individual, then two, and then three, until the ummah returns inshallah ta'ala. If we want the support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want to be victorious. We need to know what is the objective. Is it just that we have Al-Quds and we say it's ours? Or what is the objective of having it? And one of the most difficult times that the Ummah went through when the Salibiyin, the Crusaders, when they came and they took Bayt al Maqdis for around 90 years and they killed thousands and thousands of the Muslims, slaughtered them. The blood went through the streets of Al-Quds until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent from this Ummah in 583 from the Hijrah, Salah, Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, Rahimahullah ta'ala. He entered on a Friday, on Jum'ah. What was the first thing that he did? And I want you to pay attention to what I just said a minute ago. What is the hadith? What is the objective of having Al-Quds for the Ummah? The first thing he did, or from the first things he did after he cleaned up the area, and he removed the crosses, they made the Adhan, and they made the establishment of Salatul Jum'ah, the Jum'ah prayer, after 90 years when it was forbidden. Those, if we give them the establishment, they give them the, the authority upon earth, Allah makes it clear in this ayah. What do they do? They establish the prayer. They give the zakat. And they call to that which is good, and they forbid that which is evil. And to Allah returns all of the affairs. This is the objective. By establishing the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, once Bayt al-Maqdis comes back to the Muslimin. This is the objective. Not just to have it, to say it's ours. Not but to establish the religion there and upon the earth. This is the objective of the Muslim. When we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to support us, we have to realize some of the things that we need. Some of the tools that's going to help us be victorious. In the ayah, in Surah Al-Anfal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us three of the key objectives, three of the key things, or the three tools that will help us be victorious as an ummah. وَعُطِيَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ The first thing, the most important thing. Obey Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To obey Allah and to obey His Messenger. The second thing, وَلَا تَنَازَعُ And do not differ amongst yourselves. Do not dispute. And what's meant by this differing? The differing, not do 
I pray like this or you pray like this. Nah, it's not what we're talking about. And we're talking about fiqh issues. We're talking about the difference that makes us separate one another. We go into different groups. This group, that group, my group, your group. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. He says, تنازعوا, and Don't differ amongst yourselves. What happens? What's the result of this differing? Allah makes it very, very clear in the ayah. And reflect on the situation of the ummah today. When Allah says, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْحَبَ رِيْحُكُمْ You will lose your courage, the first thing. And then you will lose your strength. You will lose your courage, and then you will lose your strength. This is the reality of the ummah because we differed amongst ourselves. And most of the things, there are ashaya tafiyats, it's, it's little and the things that don't really mean much. And we make it big things, wala and bara. And even if we do differ, even if the differences have meaning, they're important issues with differences, we don't let it separate us. We still remain brothers. And this was the way of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum when they differed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us at the end of the verse, Wasbiru. Inna Allah ma'asabirin. And to be patient, indeed Allah is with the patient ones. Always the true believer, he believes. He acts upon his deen, but he has patience. He has patience. He doesn't let his anger and what he sees happening to the ummah to do haram things in order to make the ummah prevail. As we've seen many groups, and this, this understanding, my dear brothers and sisters, the ones who went astray, who fell into extremism, they had, they were zealous for the deen. They wanted good for the deen. But they didn't follow the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah. When you have to have the patience, you have to have the patience until you have the strength. Don't do that which is haram, that which is not permissible, thinking you're going to help the deen. Because in the deen of Islam, the ends do not justify the means. The ends do not justify the means. If it's done by a, halal, a haram way, then that is something that's not permissible for the Muslim to act upon. Even if he thinks he's going to support his deen. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'ani wa sunnah wa naf'ani wa yaakum bima fihima min al-ayati wa al-hikmah aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Bismillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala nabi al-mustafa wa ba'd my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it should come as no surprise to us what is happening when it comes to Bayt al-Maqdis. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they make everything very, very clear to us in the Quran and the Sunnah. It's upon us to go back and to look into the Quran and to look into the teachings of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you'll find that it's all laid out. It's all clear. The enemies of Islam, you think they're just going to leave us? Allah made it clear in the Quran. وَلَن تَرْضَعَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَن نَصَارَ حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتُهُمْ That the Christians and the Jews, they will never be pleased with you until you follow their religion. <laughs> this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what He's saying to us. So you think they're going to be pleased with us? They're going to let things slide? وَلَا يُزَالُونَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ حَتَّى يُرُدُّوكُمْ عَنْ دِينِكُمْ مِنْ اسْتَطَاعُوا They will continue to fight you and to kill you until they make you leave your religion if they have the ability to do so. This is what Allah is telling us in the Qur'an. We shouldn't be surprised. In fact, it's fair to say that what's happening now with Al-Quds, we deserve it. We deserve it because of our own actions of what we are doing and what we are not doing as Muslims. And this is very important. We go back to what we said in the beginning in the first khutbah about the blame game. Stop blaming others and look at your own self. What can I do? What can I do in my family? This is what we need to focus on. And this is what we want to take home with us today from this khutbah. Not just to remind ourselves of the importance of Al-Quds. Alhamdulillah, we know that the Quds is going to come back to us inshallah ta'ala. But what's important is how long is it going to take and what are we going to do? And when we support the ummah and we support Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the religion of Allah, we remind ourselves that even though everybody believes the Messiah will come at the end, all of the religions, that the true believers, the mu'mineen have something that the kafirin, the disbelievers don't have. 
ذلك بأن الله مولى الذين آمنوا وأن الكافرين لا مولى لهم That is because the believers have Allah as their supporter and the kafirin, the disbelievers, don't have any supporter. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu in tansur Allah yansurkum. Oh, you have believed if you support Allah, Allah will support you. My dear brothers and sisters, as we go home today, as we said, the objective is to reflect on our own situations and to make positive change instead of blaming others for what's going on and realize that all of us have a role in what's happening to the ummah today. ثُمَّ يَعْلَمُوا رَحِيمًا لَا وَيَّاكُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَمَرَكُمْ بِأَمْرَ بَدَا بِي بِنَفْسِهِ ثُمَّ ثَنَّ بِمَلَائِكَةِ الْكِرَامِ فَقَالَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا ويقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى علي بواحدة صلى الله عليها بعشرة اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وعنم على نبينا محمد ورضى الله من الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وانسائر الصحابة أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين